Go with me in the Old Testament to the book of Joshua, the book of Joshua chapter 3 in the Old Testament. Let me read this, then we're going to pray, and I just want to share a few truths with you from the Word of God this morning that God would move and have His way. Joshua chapter 3 in the Old Testament, and if you can get there, we can um, read that together and allow God to just move and have His way in our midst. Anybody excited about 2018? Y'all don't sound too excited. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. One year older. I was telling someone um, when I was a kid, a year was like a thousand years. It was a long, long time. The older I get, the faster they go. Is that just me or is that yeah, I'm like, what's the, I felt like I was just preaching New Year's service, and I'm like, God, we need to talk about this. Yeah, because that means I'm going to die quick, you know. It's, <laughs> slow this thing down. Slow it down. It's going, it's going, going way too fast. Joshua, Joshua chapter 3. Let me read verses 1 through 5, and there is so much in this story, but I want to um, just limit what we're going to say to the first five verses of Joshua chapter 3. Um, let me read. It says, Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Shittim, and they came to the Jordan, he and all the people of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. At the end of three days, the officer went through the camp and commanded the people, As soon as you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God, being carried by the Levitical priests, Then you shall set out from this place and follow it. Yet there shall be a distance between you and it, about 2,000 cubits in length. Do not go near it in order that you may know the way um, you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among, among you. Bow your heads with me. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we pray that as we go to your word, that you would speak clearly this morning, God. Um, Here we are, the first Sunday in 2018, and we need a word from you. We want to hear from you, God, so as we go into the year, we can start strong and finish strong, and more importantly, we can place you where you would have us to be. So for everyone that's here this morning, God, it's just been impressed on my spirit to bless them because every person that's here came to hear from you. They don't want to hear from Felix. They want to hear from you. So I move out of the way, God, and I, I, I just crucify flesh, and I ask you, Lord, to speak through me to your people so we can hear from heaven this morning. We give our hearts, we give our time to you, that you be glorified. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen, amen, amen. As we're about to go into 2018, here we are, we stand, um, the phrase I'm going to use is we stand on the banks of a whole year that's ahead of us. And a lot of us have goals, a lot of us have plans, a lot of us have resolutions, a lot of us have things we've set out in front of us to say we're going to do in this upcoming year and things that we're hoping to accomplish, dreams. As a ministry, we have a vision to realize we are embarking, um, restating, or reliving, if I could use the term, double vision. And we have goals ahead of us that we want to accomplish, that we all must accomplish. But before we get too quick to jump into 2018 and repeat all the cycles that we have done in previous years, and which resulted in unrealized goals, unrealized vision, unrealized things, I want to pause just for a moment to share with you um, just the big idea from this text so you can kind of see what God is doing in our midst. And here's where I want you to take in to the year as we look into this is that if we're going to prosper in 2018, we must depend on God for everything, number one. Number two, we must follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And number three, we must live a morally pure life. Come on, say amen. I want to flesh that out a little bit for you this morning because I believe that that's the same challenge that Joshua faced in his new leadership. He was a new leader that had just come on the scene. Matter of fact, the text that's in front of us 
is written some 40 years and three days after the Israelites had been released from slavery in Egypt. Remember with me that for 40, for 400 plus years, the Israelites found themselves in slavery in Egypt, then God sent Moses to deliver them, to set them free. Then they went on this, this plight, they went on this journey where they were trying to get from Egypt to their place of promise, their place of destiny, the place that God has promised them. Even though it was simply an 11-day journey, when they got there the first time, they doubted God. Come on, y'all. And the result of them doubting God, it resulted in them having to go through this long 40-year um, wilderness wandering where God eliminated every person who doubted him. So at the time of the text, they, they found themselves once again at the banks or at the outskirts of this place of promise where God has promised them. Now, the thing that I want you to take from the text or hear me say this morning as we go into the passage, there was only one remaining thing that prevented them from inhabiting their place of promise. Anybody ever felt in your journey that I'm almost there? Come on, y'all. Talk to me this morning. I, I know I felt that. You know, we've been leading this ministry for about 18 years, and, and you look at it every year, you want to say, man, we're almost there. We're, we're almost there. There's just one thing remaining that's separating us from the place of promise. And I want to, that, that's where Joshua finds himself. There was one thing remaining that separated them from their place of promise. They had to cross the Jordan. And as they had to cross the Jordan, before they crossed the Jordan to get into the land of Canaan so God could do what God wanted to do, God wanted to give them, God needed to give them some specific instruction that they need to adhere to so they can be prosperous in the land and so they can reap the benefit of what God has in store for them. At the beginning of 2018, I think there are some principles in this passage that's transferable, that's relevant to me, that's relevant to you, that if we can hear what God said to the Israelites and we can apply it to what God is saying to you and what God is saying to me today, I'm going to stand in front of you confidently and say, you're going to make it in 2018. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Amen. I'm going to stand in front of you confidently and say you're going to make it. Matter of fact, let me go here. You're going to be prosperous in 2018. And don't hear that word so much in a financial sense, but hear it in a spiritual sense where God is going to do some phenomenal things to you. Come on this morning. I want y'all to hear me. But it's going to call for some things. It's going to call for some things. We must depend on God. We must depend on, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we must live these morally pure lives. So I want us to look at the text that's in front of us. And I want us to flesh out what's really happening here so we can hear and, and hear what God is saying. And I'm going to challenge you to, to get, if it's download the podcast, if it's listen to the message over and over again, so this thing permeates in your spirit so you can get to where God would have us to be. So look with me. Let me read, let me read um, verses. Just jump into verse 1, then we're going to read them, we're going to talk. Moses, I mean, Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out for Shittim, and they came to the Jordan, he and all the people of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. It's kind of like, here you are Sunday morning, and you're preparing to go Monday morning back to the real world. Come on, does that make sense? So we're camped, we're camped. And we want to hear what God has to say for us. Verse 2 says, at the end of three days, the officers went through the camp. And look at verse 3. And he commanded the people, as soon as you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Repeat out to me. Say, when you see the ark, follow it. Say it again. Say, when you see the ark, follow it. I'm going to share with you five things. Number one, the first thing I want us to understand, to be successful in 2018, we must be willing to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. I need a couple of amens in here. Okay, I want you all to walk this out with me. Let me just share with you, number one, before you do anything else, covenant to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
Understand with me that the Israelites, up until this time, they would set camp. And in the wilderness, while they were traveling for 40 years, they would not leave the camp until it was either the pillar of fire by night or the pillar of cloud by day. Now, what's different is that they're no longer instructed to follow the cloud or the fire. They're now being instructed to follow the ark. I wish I had somebody in here. You see, there's a time in your life where you were comfortable following the cloud and the fire. It's a new season because God wants to do something different. So the call now is to follow the ark. Maybe you don't understand what the ark of the covenant is. The ark of the covenant, at least in the Old Testament during the wilderness wanderings and the wilderness journey, was probably the most prominent or it was the most prominent piece of furniture that the Israelites had to carry with them on their wilderness journey. What the ark was, it was something where God enabled them to construct, to put some memorabilia in there to remind them of who God is. Within the ark, it had Aaron's rod, it had the manna, it had copies of the commandments. And those of you that know anything about Old Testament history, history the ark symbolized a lot. It symbolized, let me just go here, the presence of God with the Israelites. Are you with me? So, so there's a couple of things I want to point out as we kind of walk through this and look at this this morning. I want to be, number one, the ark was a visible sign that the invisible God was dwelling with the Israelites. Now, maybe you don't get this, so let me take a moment to flesh this out. God is spirit. Y'all know that, right? And so if you're looking to see God physically and tangibly, you won't see God physically and tangibly. So what God did was he enabled the Israelites to create a representation of who he was. And, and, and it's almost as if he housed himself inside this thing, although we know that's impossible. And wherever they went, as long as they had the box, they knew God was with them. Come on, y'all. That's Old Testament. That's Old Testament history. Here's what it looks like in the New Testament. In the New Testament, it says, know you not that your body is what? The temple. I wish I had somebody in here in the Holy Spirit. So, so let me go ahead because I don't have time to flesh this out. You need to hear me say this morning, your body now becomes the ark of the Old Testament. Oh, yeah. So, so guess what that means? In you, the Spirit of God, what? Dwell. So when I say follow the ark, I'm not saying follow your flesh. I'm saying follow the God. That's, I wish I had somebody in here. I, I, I wish. I, so here's what he says, number two. It says when you see the ark. So, so here's what that's really, really saying. Henry Blackaby puts it this way. When God is silent, you sit still and you wait on the last thing you heard God said. So in 2018, don't go about making decisions for God. Oh, come on, y'all. You, you sit there and you wait until God speaks. Come on. In 2018, don't follow any sign that you see. The call is to follow the ark, follow the spirit, follow God. Wait until God, the spirit of God that's on the inside of you, follow the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit if you want to stop messing up. I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but, but I have an inclination, I have a tendency to be impatient. I have a tendency that when things aren't happening fast enough, I want to help God out. Come on, y'all. And, and it seems to in my helping God out that I keep messing up. So here's what 2018 looks like for me. I got to sit still and wait until the ark speaks. Oh, I wish I had. I wish I had somebody in here. I don't have time to deal with all this, but look at number three. Number three is very, very critical for 2018. You can't follow Satan and the Spirit at the same time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Follow the ark, not follow the devil. Oh, come on up. Because here's what Luke 6 says, right? It says, a, a house divided amongst itself. No man can follow what? two masters, either you're going to love one or you're going to hate the other. So here's what that means in 2018. You've got to make a choice on who you're going to follow. 
I'm not saying this expressively, but I'm going to say it implicitly. There are certain things you're going to have to give up because the instructions have been coming from the wrong place. I wish I could. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't follow. Look, look, look at number four. It says, you got to be able to recognize the ark to know what it's like or where it is so you can follow it. Let me tell you why that's important. Let me tell you why that's important. Because a whole lot of us have been in church a long time, and a whole lot of us still have not yet learned how to hear the voice of God and how to listen to the voice of God. So here's what this means for 2018. We need to grow to the place where we can recognize God's voice because here's what it means. It says, if, if, if I'm going to recognize the voice, this what let me jump to the number six. Look at number six. It demands a relationship with God because here's what John says, right? My sheep, what? Hear my voice and I know them, and they follow me. So the reason this is important, this, the reason this is important, if God says move, you need to know it's God speaking. Come on, talk to me, y'all. So some things have to change because we've been listening to a lot of things we ought not have been listening to. So that means we need to eliminate, number five, we have to eliminate some distractions in our lives in 2018 if we're going to follow the ark. Hebrews put it this way, lay aside every what? Weight and the sin that does so easily do what? Beset us and run with what? Patience, the race that's set before us. So if you've been getting instructions from desperate housewives, some things need to change around here. I wish I had. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I, I don't want to get in trouble. If you've been getting instructions from Oprah, come on. Some things need to change. If you've been getting instructions from Jerry Springer, come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all don't want to hear, yeah, yeah. Some things need to change. Eliminate the distractions because here's what happens. We go home and we wake up in the morning and as opposed to spending some time recognizing the voice of the ark, spending time in the word of God, the first thing we do is put on the distractions. I wish I had. Or when we come home, come on. In 2018, if we're going to follow the ark, get used to recognizing who God is and hearing his voice. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, learn to hear his voice. Come on, tell him, say, learn to hear his voice. A couple of things, a couple of things. Now, it's going to be tight, but, but here's what you need to understand about the ark. The ark, the ark was this box. The ark was this box. And inside the box, it contained some critical elements. It contained the Ten Commandments, Right? It, it contained a law. It contained a sample of the manna, and it also contained Aaron's rod. Now, the reason I wanted to point that out, because if you are the ark, if you and I now are the temple of the Holy Spirit, we've got to house the same things on the, in, uh, on the inside of the ark. Come on, yeah. Here's how David said it. Thy word have I hidden where? That I might not want. Yeah, yeah. So you got to get some word. Come on. In. I wish I had somebody in here. You got to get some word in the ark and you need to put it on the inside so that it's preserved. So lock into this. So wherever you go, the word of God is. Wherever you show up, the word of God is. Wherever you find yourself, you've got word in the ark. Not only do you need work in the ark, but you need some sampling of the manna. Here's what the manna was. The manna says, whenever they got hungry, God provided. Come on. God took care of that. I wish I had somebody in here. If you've got a testimony of the provision of God, the faithfulness of God, here's what manna in the ark says. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. In 2018, I'm telling you, if the word is in the ark, God is going to provide. God is going to take care of you. God's going to give you everything you need, but keep it in the ark. Are you with me? I like the fact that the rod was in the ark because what the rod says, it, it demonstrated the miraculous working hand of God. So, so here's what that means. In 2018, if there's a rod in the ark, and there is, God is still a miracle working God. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you need, God's got it. But first get the word in the ark. Yeah, are you with me? 
He can take care of you. He can provide. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me move on because I, I got some things I need to share, and I want us to get through this. So here's the other thing. To be successful in 18, not only, not only do we need to follow the ark, but, but we must develop a posture of reverence and listen to the word that I'm saying. Continual what? Worship of what? So, so let me say this before I even go into the text. Not just on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Not that I came to church so I'm good for the week. So I can go do what I want to do. Are you with me? I'm not talking about something you put on and something you take off. Don't, 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 miss, don't miss the descriptive continual. Come on, say continual. Come on, say, say continual. This is why I wish grandma and them was there because grandma and them would say it this way. I woke up this morning with my mind. Come on, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she'd go shopping for groceries. I'm shopping and I'm cooking with my mind. Are oh, y'all not hearing me? Stayed on Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dancing and I'm shouting with my wife. My, y'all not hearing me this morning. And, and you wonder why grandma could make it. You wonder why she didn't have much, but she knew God was able because she stayed in a continual posture of worship and reverence for God. Look at the text. Look at the text. Y'all want to, where am I getting now? Look at the text. It says here, it says here, um, verse 4, it says, um, yet there shall be a distance between you. I want to make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself. Yeah. A distance between you and it of about what? 2,000 cubit. Notice what it says. Do not come near it in order that you may know the way that you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. Y'all say this. Say, been there, done that. Listen to me. Not. Okay? You have not been through 2018 yet. You have not done 2018 yet. So look at the verse. The verse says, You shall keep a distance between you and it being the ark of about 2,000 cubits in length. Don't come near it in order that you may know which way you should go, for you have not passed this way before. I, I like that. I like that because if, if you know anything about Old Testament history, the ark was so special and precious to God that there are instances in the Bible where the ark was being carried and the donkey slipped and the wheel fell in a hole and the people that were carrying the ark reached over to touch it to stabilize it and in the touching of it, they themselves died. You, you don't go near the ark. Y'all, maybe you don't remember this. The Philistine captured the ark from the Israelites. And then they put the ark in their temple next to their pagan god named Dagon. And every morning they'd wake up because of the presence of God in the presence of the enemy. Y'all not hear me. Dagon was continually destroyed. So here's what I want y'all to say. Revere the God that's on the inside. Come on. Don't take God. I wish I had somebody in here. Don't take God where you took him yesterday. Come on. You hadn't been this fear. Come on. Don't do things with the spirit of God that's in you that you did yesterday. A posture of reverence and worship. I'm going to talk about this in the upcoming year. But the problem with me and the problem with you is we lock into the transcendence of God. And what that means is that God sits high and he's up in heaven. But we forget the truth that he's transcendent, but he's also eminent, which means he's far and he's near at the same time. And, and if I remember and reflect on the fact that he's near some of the things that I do, I really won't do it because I realize he's watching me. Are you hearing me? So number one, number two, uh, three, Revere the God. Worship him. Give him praise. That's if we want to succeed in 2018. And, and what I like about the text is that it says, the text says, the reason you need to do this is, is you have never been this way before. 
Come on, does that make sense? I want you all to hear me. Let me, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Because lock into this. Because to be successful, still in that verse, we must learn to depend or look to God for guidance and direction because we are traversing uncharted territory. Yeah, come on, y'all ain't got quiet. Y'all say amen, let me know here. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 91 or if you're one. You haven't seen 2018 yet. So you don't know what lays ahead. So, so tomorrow is uncharted territory in that you don't have a road map by which to go by. Are you with me? So, so here's what the text says. Look at verse 4. Keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits. That's about 1,000 yards or about 3,000 feet. And here's what the author is saying. Here's what the author is saying. You've got to understand there's probably 6 million plus people that made the exodus from Egypt to go to the home in Canaan. And, and the instruction was, and I'm going to come back to this before I close because I missed it, only the priests were allowed to carry the ark. So here's what it says. Y'all still sit still. Everybody sit still and make sure you can see the direction that the ark is going. Yeah. So here's what that means. You got to figure with that many people, God is saying, let the ark get far enough ahead of you so you can see it clearly. I wish I had a button. Here's the importance, here's the importance of seeing it clearly. If, 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 the, if you're back here and the ark is going that way and you can see it clearly, if you make a choice to go this way, it's because you wanted to. It's not because the ark, I wish I had somebody, led you in that direction. You're going in uncharted territory. And here's what that means. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to figure it out because you've never been that way before. So follow me, God is saying. Let me lead you into your destiny. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Because here's what that happens. We turn on the television. We see the new fad. And guess what we do? Follow it. The new pyramid scheme comes out, and guess what we do? Follow it. The next trend comes out, and guess what we do? Follow it. So here's what the word of the Lord is saying. To avoid following trends in 2018, follow God. But notice the text. Make sure you can see clearly where God is leading. Make sure you can see clearly. And here's what the text says. You've never been this way before. There's two things associated with that. There's a literal and physical meaning, and there's a spiritual implication associated with that. Here's what that means. Physically, I have never seen 2018, right? So the, if I'm going to walk it out, if my destiny is part of it, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but if I follow God, I'll find out the way God intends that I find out. Are you hearing me this morning? Okay, so, 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 so whatever my destiny is, whatever your destiny is, whatever your future holds, whatever tomorrow has in store for you, you may think you know what it is. Physically, we don't know. We follow God. We follow God. Here's the second thing. This is heavy. This is heavy because this one really, really hit me hard. Spiritually, I haven't faced 2018 yet. So here's what that means. There's some things I have right now that I've brought over with me from 2017. Oh, stop acting like you hadn't brought nothing over. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Y'all stop it. Some of y'all got a dump truck behind you. And now here, here's the spiritual implication of the text. God is saying to the Israelites, before you go into that Jordan, hit the release button on the dump truck. And watch that truck raise up like that. And watch everything fall out. Yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. And watch everything fall out, okay? And then keep your eyes on the ark. 
and then watch what I'm going to do, okay? And here's what he's saying. Here's what he's saying. If you're honest with yourself, here's what he's saying. Here's what he's saying. And trust me, you've never done that before. Let me speak for me. Let me stop talking to y'all about y'all. Talk to me. I have never done that before. Okay, I'm 25 years old. And, 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 <laughs> see, yeah, see, release button, yeah, I'm 57, okay, yeah, see, I got to stop. <laughs> Lord Jesus, see how easy that is, right? And, 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 but he, here's, the th- here's the thing, I notice at my age, 57 years old, that I still have stuff that I had from way back when. And, and here's the dumb thing I do. Every doggone year I make a new covenant, I'm going to lose that one. I'm going to give that one up. And if I look in a dumb truck, it's full. Everything's still in there. <laughs> Everything. It's still in there. And so here's what God is saying. Hit the release button and lock into this now. Lock into this. Lock into this, okay? Look for guidance because we, I'm going into uncharted territory. I don't know what it's like to go into 2018 with an empty dumb truck. I don't know what it's like. I think I'm comfortable in saying you don't know what it's like to go into 2018 with an empty dump truck. So spiritually, I have to prepare myself to follow God because I want to succeed. I want to prosper. I want to be different. Are you hearing me? So, so when I hit the release button now, I need to follow God because I have never been this way before. I've never done that before. I have never done what God is asking me to do before. Because here's the premise of it. Listen, Israelites, I brought you all out of slavery. And the reason it took you 40 years to get into Canaan, because you had a slavery mindset for the whole 40 years you've been following me. And it took a minimum of 40 years for you to get rid of some stuff. And here you are at the banks of the Jordan about to cross over, and you still have stuff after 40 years of following me. 40 years of following me. I done killed off the whole crew that messed up. And all y'all new ones, 40 years, you still got stuff. Here's what we're going to do. Draw sand on the line. You're not crossing over with that stuff. So, so, so he says this, to be successful, we got to look to him for guidance because we're walking in uncharted territory. And then, and then look, look at this one. Let me, let, me, let me hit this one. So the fifth thing I want you all to get is this. So to be successful, I must consecrate myself in preparation for the move of God in my life. Let me read, let me read, let me read. Let me talk. Look at verse, look at verse, look at verse 35. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do, what's the word? Wonders or new things among you. Okay? So, so this is critical. This is critical because it says the reception of the new thing is predicated on the purity of the consecration. Here's what we want. God's going to bless me, and we're all jacked up. We're disobedient. We're defiant. We haven't submitted to the things of God, but we want God to do for us. Okay? The command is to be successful, we must be willing to consecrate ourselves in preparation for the move of God because tomorrow God wants to do new things, but it calls for a different level of obedience, right? So, so I took a moment, I took a moment to give you the Hebrew definition for the word Kadesh which is, is, is to consecrate. And I want to read this because this is critical. This is critical. Because this one hit me like a ton of brick. Because, like, here's me. I don't know if I can do that. I might still want the dump truck hooked up. But then here's what I'm saying. I'm willing to fail again. And I'm not. Kadesh, right? To be holy. To be in a state of having superior moral qualities with behavior which is positively unique and pure, and I like this, in contrast to other corrupt standards. 
got to flesh it out. got to flesh it out. got to flesh it out. I got to flesh it out. Here's what that means. I want you to be in the world, but I don't want you to be of the world. I, I got I to flesh this out. I got to flesh this out. Gotta, um, and I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble. I really am. Here's trouble number one. Because the world have sex before marriage, Because it's a new day. It doesn't mean you got to try it out before you marry it. See, y'all got quiet. This is hard. This is hard. Because the world thinks it's okay to cohabitate, use a softer word, it doesn't mean that you got to move in. Because the world accepts all kinds of immoral sins and they say it's okay, it doesn't mean you have to do it. Let me tell you why. My promises are not for the world. (laughs) My promises are for you. Now, the reason this is hard for me because I like some of the things the world likes. And I know some of them are sin. And God is saying, give it up. And I've never been that way before. So I've got to hit release on a dump truck and trust God anew. So I need to consecrate myself. So when people see me, they see the ark of the covenant of the Lord. I wish I had somebody with me. With all the power, all the anointing, all the everything that the ark carries. And it's not just some crazy, hypocritical Christian. So the call now is to be separate. Right? Right? Back up to verse. Then I'm going to land this. Back up to verse. Back up to verse. Let me show you all this. Back up to verse um, 3. Back up to verse 3. And let me hit this one because I think I missed it. To be successful in 2018, you cannot walk in the flesh, but you must continually walk how? I like that word continue. Come on, y'all say continually. Continually Continually walk how? Let me say this and then I'll be done. Let me say that we're going to go. We're going to appear to consecration. Notice what it says here. And command the people... As soon as you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God, being carried by who? By who? The Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Now, listen to this, then we'll be done. God delivered the Israelites from Canaan, brought them to the banks of the Jordan, about to cross the Jordan, to fight a war to possess Canaan. You would think that God would say, when the ark, or when, here's what I want you all to do. Put all the military men up front. Put all, sharpen your swords. Do everything you physically can because you're about to go into battle against the Jebusites and the Parasites and the Amorites and all those folk that inhabit Canaan, right? You would think he would say that. But notice who he said, I want to go out front. The what? The, come on, everybody say, say the Levitical priest. This is important. This is important. This is important. Because here's what you need to know back in that day and age. And study this out historically, culturally. There were priests and there were Levitical priests. The Levitical priests carried the Aaronic an anointing in that they were descendants and they were the true lineage of the priests. The other priests were wannabes. Let me help you all out. There's Christians and then there's Christians. 
Right, yeah, y'all get it, y'all get it, y'all get it, y'all get it. Yeah, you, get, you finally got it, you finally get it. Yeah, yeah. So here's what you have to decide this morning. The only people authorized to carry the ark were of Aaronic descent, Levitical priests. Sure enough was connected to God. Oh, my gosh. Sure enough was connected. Can't fake the funk on this one. You had to be connected, right? And then when you're sure enough connected, it was a sign that God was there. So let me land here. Let me land here. If you're wrestling with hearing God, obeying God, being truth to the command of God, just check the descendant. Am I Aaronic from Aaron? Am I part of the Levitical tribe? Or am I just out here? Here's the beauty of the New Testament. We can all be connected. 2019, if we're going to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh, because here's the flesh says, if you find yourself every time you encounter somebody, the first thing, I'm going to give you peace of my mind, and you actually give it to them. <laughs> it's one thing to say I'm going to do it, then don't do it. It's nothing to say I'm going to do it, then you do it, Right? Always cussing somebody out. Don't call yourself Levitical. 2018 has to start right. Can we do that, y'all? Can we be honest this morning? We came to worship, right? So here's me all week. Lord, keep me connected. Keep me connected. Because this flesh will surface. Am I just talking about myself? Come on, y'all, all right? Yeah. Anybody else have a flesh that will surface from time to time? Yeah, yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah, let's just be, yeah. Come on, on y'all. Don't, don't be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. I'm going to get it right. Are you with me? I want to get it right because I want to prosper in 2018. So I've got to keep my flesh in check. So I have to stay connected to the vine. So here's what God said. Consecrate yourself to the Lord, Right? And, and here's what consecration means. Come on, worship team. Here, here's what consecration means. I want, I want you all to see um, what consecration means. Here's what it means. If I'm going to prosper, I must depend on God for everything, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, and I've got to live a morally pure life. As you see me this year, I'm different. As I see you this year, you're different. And... Because we're consecrating ourselves because God's going to do a new thing tomorrow. And we want to be the recipients of it. So at the beginning of the year, Lord, clean me. Lord, purify me. Come on, y'all. Lord, I give myself to you on this day so I can be about you. So here's what we can do. We, we, today is first Sunday. We come to the Lord's table and we're going to land here. But... but Take a moment, take a moment, take a moment, and bow your heads and you go to God because you're on the bank of your tomorrow. And I just really hear the Lord saying that he wants to do wonders in this ministry. He wants to do wonders with you. He wants your home to be right. He wants your job to be right. Come on, he wants your family to be right. He wants your finances to be right. He wants everything about you to be right. But Matthew 6.33 comes into play here. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. So right where you sit and just bow your heads and say, Lord, as I go into this year, God, make it right, Lord. Help me make it right. Take a moment just to go there as our minister is just positioned.